All right, well, welcome back, everyone. My name is Remy from Logix, and I'm honored to be continuing this course with you, our uh, MBlock 5 uh, Steam on Board online training course. Uh, uh, believe it or not, we're, uh, we're more than halfway through the course, uh, so I hope uh, you've enjoyed it so far, and uh, Mina and I uh, are excited to continue the learning with you. Um, I, I do want to take a moment. I know there's been a lot going on in the world this week, so I want to take a moment to uh, recognize um, what's going on in our world. And, and of course, as educators, um, you know it, it's critical that uh, we continue to share our, um, our our passion for equality, uh, our passion for um, uh, you know for for continued learning for every individual out there. Uh, and, and respecting every individual out there. Uh, so I understand that may, uh, with lots going on uh, this week, that may affect some, uh, who's able to attend. But as always, we are recording these sessions um, so that if, if someone is unable to attend today, uh, they can catch up and, and, and watch it at their own uh, leisure. Um, so again, uh, welcome back. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, by now you're familiar with uh, getting ready for today's uh, content. Uh, but I do want to highlight uh, one key thing, uh, which is that uh, if you do land on uh, our Steam on Board webpage, uh, it, it may look a little bit different today uh, because we've actually started a French series that started today, same time. Um, so you'll see that all the material uh, for lesson uh, one, uh, uh, all the two eight, are uh, available for download uh, in English uh, as well as the videos for uh, lessons one to four are now also available, link there. And, and then today we're gonna be doing uh, lesson five, Pandas Race, and you can download the material there and the video will be available shortly after. If, any, if you have any colleagues or friends who are interested in French, there is a French series which is starting lessons one through four, which we've already completed in English, uh, starting today for the next four weeks. Um, and, and then again, all this material and videos will be available on the site uh, after today um, and, and after the series is even over, so you can always go back and watch it. And our virtual training series uh, and our virtual training series information, we have over 40 workshops every single week uh, of diverse topics. Uh, and so you're more than welcome to visit logiscanomy.com forward slash virtual training and attend any of the sessions you're interested in. They're all free. Uh, we have some awesome topics. Uh, I got to attend one this week around artificial intelligence uh, with a partner uh, from uh, one of our partner organizations involved in the classroom and, and looking at what that means. Uh, I thought it was quite neat. So if, if you're interested in any of the topics, uh, feel free to join there. And all of these sessions are also being recorded and they're available on our YouTube channel at Logics Academy, I'm sorry, at youtube.com forward slash Logics Academy under the playlist of virtual training series. And again, um, if as you're going through uh, this course, uh, you can find all the resources for the software, um, the discussion um, are available uh, right here under educator resources as well as the Google Classroom integration, tutorial slides and video um, are also available there. So feel free to join in the conversation on uh, our community, uh, ask any questions you may have, participate, share some of your learning uh, and, and uh, continue the discussion. All right, well, without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Mina, who's gonna continue leading us in the learning today. And again, we, today we'll be doing lesson five Pandas race, and I would encourage you to please open up uh, MBlock 5 software if you haven't already done so. And as well, you can open up the download the curriculum material, which you can just simply click there to uh, open um, the file contents, and you can download the files right there. You'll see that there's a lesson plan, a PowerPoint and PDF, as well as the PowerPoint original file, and then the example programs we'll be using today. So again, take a moment to do that and uh, excited to get started. So over to you, Mina, uh, to continue the training today. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Rami, for uh, another week of uh, learning how to code with MBlock 5 um, and uh, diving a little bit deeper. I know Andrew's excited in the chat there, and so am I. So um, as always, uh, we're going to start with the lesson plan 
Um, if you have not opened that yet, please go ahead and um, and do that. And uh, we'll kind of recall what we did uh, last week. Um, we got Panda to move for the very first time, and um, we got him to uh, say the the movements or the costumes that um, he was able to switch uh, into uh, and switch back and forth. So we got him moving last week. This week or today, we're going to get him to start running um, and really move across the screen. So uh, this this will combine what we learned last week with what we will learn uh, this week. So I hope you had a chance to create um, the, the the work that's part of the independent practice uh, of last week and, and post it on the uh, global community of mBlock5 and, and shared your project that way. Um, and today we'll get started with um, getting Panda to move across the screen. Um, so just a reminder for those that are maybe joining us for the first time or those that are with us from uh, the beginning, um, I'm going to be wearing a couple of hats. Uh, one to give you teacher tips as well as uh, going through the lesson together um, as as you know as a trainer uh, and and show you how to make the projects and uh, and and learn uh, from each other. So um, as you can see on my shared screen here, I have opened the lesson plan. Um, and as always, the lesson plans are very consistent with what they uh, what they show and what they cover. Um, <clears throat> for lesson five, Panda's race, the objectives that your learners or your students uh, will learn is to create a program in mBlock that contains multiple sprites. Now, this is the first time that we're going to be doing this, so it's going to be really interesting to see how uh, we can add more sprites and now uh, code them in, um, in mBlock5. Uh, we will revisit motion blocks. Remember, we used that in lesson one. So we'll use motion blocks to control sprites movement and position. And this is a new math connection, um, especially for grades, I would say, six and seven, or even as early as four and five. So it kind of creates um, a good range for math uh, in different grades. Um, positioning the sprites on the stage using X, Y coordinates. So this is a new uh, math connection that we will cover uh, today. And then finally, we'll be able to uh, explain the importance of setting the position of a sprite at the start of a program. And that's really important uh, for today's session. Uh, again, the overview is to create an mBlock project with multiple sprites running separate programs. Um, and getting the students to utilize mBlock's coordinate plane, which we'll show in just a minute, to position and move sprites by setting specific x, y coordinates. And uh, we're going to combine costume changes that we learned last week with motion to animate a sprite walking across the stage. Um, and we'll also talk about the different values that help uh, Panda or sprites, you know, slow up or speed up, uh, slow down or speed up. Um, in their motion. Um, the pre-lesson checklist uh, just shows you what you need to have open. So obviously either mBlock5 installed on your computer or the uh, web-based version uh, open on a uh, you know, browser tab. You have the slides, presentation, PDF, and uh, for the students, uh, either the installed version or the, the website of mBlock. As I'm scrolling down here, you can see the standards um, for CST and ISD. Those are pretty st uh, straightforward. And um, the new uh, items here for the provincial standards uh, are what I mentioned for grades, uh, let's say four mathematics in Ontario, um, where they start to uh, use the general location of an object in a grid system, um, as well as uh, different grade levels in, for example, BC, Alberta, um, New Brunswick and so on. So um, you can see that curriculum connection for math, especially for the Cartesian planes um, and how we're going to connect that uh, today. Uh, just scrolling down here, this is the beginning of the actual lesson plan, the warm up, and we've always started with uh, a quick warm up or, or a review of what we did 
uh, last week. And I'm just going to jump into uh, the, the slide deck or the PowerPoint that is available to you. And we'll review this together um, as, as we begin today's uh, session. Um, so last week we review or we built a uh, program that not only was triggered by a particular event, but we also used various new blocks such as loops, which includes the forever loop. Um, and we also used another control uh, that is a wait number, a set number of seconds. And we also used um, uh, switching to the next costume, which is under the looks menu. So when we put this together, we're able to see that Panda was literally walking in place and uh, it's done by this 2D animation of just a, a very simple next costume or switch to next costume block. And this is just a quick breakdown of, uh, of the blocks and their function. Um, we saw that there's a forever loop, but there's also a repeat uh, set number of times, also found in control. And um, this block helps continuously repeat the blocks that are nested inside of it. So we use another term um, uh, nested to refer to the blocks that are inside the forever loop. Uh, the next costume tab obviously just switch, switches the, the sprite's costume to the next one. And recall, if the sprite only has one costume, there's nothing uh, left to switch to, or there's nothing to switch to uh, regardless. So it just uh, stays as it is. There's nothing to, to do there. And then the wait number of seconds um, helps you slow down or speed up um, your program as you are reading it. So we're going to dive into the hands-on portion of uh, today's session, and we're going to uh, start building the code that gets Panda to uh, start running and walking, uh, sorry, uh, you know, showing this running movement using uh, motion. <clears throat> so we're going to get to move a sprite, and um, again, we're revisiting something that we did in lesson one, which is move uh, a certain number of steps. And if you recall from lesson one, this is found in the blue color area of the blocks and that's under motion. And the main function of this block is to move the sprite a certain number of steps. Now, there, the, the block that is provided here on the left mm -hmm. is different than the example that is uh, provided here on the right. So I have a question uh, for you just to get you um, warmed up really in, uh, in this lesson. Um, in terms of Panda's movement, this is the question that you can type in the chat. In terms of Panda's movement, which one would be faster? The one that is the 10 steps or the one that is one step? Which one would Panda be uh, a little bit faster or walking faster here? So take a second and uh, and type that into the chat, and we'll talk about the difference in just a minute. And you can recall that the, the blocks that are inside the forever loop, those are nested, and they follow the order of sequence that they're put in. So it would, Panda would move one step, and uh, it would switch on to the next costume. So, um, the, so I mentioned which one would go faster, um, and the answer is 10. So the 10 steps would be uh, the faster uh, speed, if you want to think about it. The slower speed is the, sl um, is the, uh, sh the smaller value, so it's one. So don't, uh, don't get it confused with wait. Um, if you wait longer, if you have a, a higher value in the wait block, that is going to make your panda slower versus if you have a shorter wait time, it will make your panda faster. So don't um, don't get confused with um, you know wait and move. But I just wanted to uh, bring to your attention uh, the the higher the steps, the the you know the farther the or you know faster he would go across the screen, and we'll just uh, see that in a minute. All right, so we're gonna start. Um, 
by actually building this code. So I'm just going to go back to the slide um, just to show you what we're going to be building. And I understand that the lesson really goes through the steps again one by one. So steps one to five, I think, in this one. But um, I want you to give you I want to give you the opportunity to remember how to build this on your own without um, without requiring uh, you know me showing you the steps of where to find each and every block. So um, if you have a chance, open up uh, M block five and we'll start with a new um, file. So you can either open it on the installed version on your computer or you can open it in the web-based version uh, online. As always, it does start with devices and we won't be using devices during this uh, training. Hopefully um, in the near future, we're going to start connecting devices but let's click on the sprites tab and we're going to build our code where Panda is um, moving across the screen. So, uh, and we're going to trigger this with an event um, that is when flag is clicked. So we're going to click on, or we're going to take out a when flag is clicked event space by clicking and dragging um, in control. That's where we can find the forever loop and place that under there. And uh, we need two more blocks here, which are the, uh, the motion block as well as the uh, next costume. So we're gonna get Panda to move one step and switch costume after that. So motion, move one step. So as it shows, it's uh, default is 10, but we're going to get it to move one. We want it to slowly move across the screen and then right under looks, we're going to switch to the next costume. So when you're ready, um, you can run the code and observe what Panda is doing. Observe what Panda is doing with, um, with what he's doing as he's you know, going across the screen. So I'm gonna click on flag, green flag, and let's see what happens here. So you and your learners, uh, if you're running this into the in the classroom or virtually, um, you can notice that you know Panda has moved across, across the screen, but what we run into a problem. What is that problem? Please share with us in the chat. What is the problem that we run into when we run our code? So I'm going to press the stop button or the stop uh, trigger here. And I'm going to click on flag again. What's going on? Yeah, Bridget, yeah, he doesn't stop. What else is the problem here that we're noticing in our code? Yeah, walks off the screen. He's still walking, right? He's switching, you know, his um, his costume. He's using the steps, but he's literally stuck on the right side of the screen. So um, how do we fix this? How are we able to um, fix the code? And so now this is part of, the problem solving that you can share with your students or your learners. How can, what else can we add? So um, somebody said there's no reset button. Absolutely. Um, how do we, re we talked about reset when we did transformations in lesson four. Um, so how do we uh, do this? How do we reset the, um, the area that um, Panda is in? Now, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. And obviously, some of the answers that um, that you can get from your learners is, hey, you can drag Panda back to you know, the center of the screen or to the left. Um, that's great. Let's let's try this again. Where you can um, where you can, you know, physically or manually drag Panda on to the left side and press flag again. But you want to, You don't want to keep doing this um, all the time. Um, and I do see a lot of comments coming in uh, in the chat about um, clearing effects. Now we we didn't do any transformations, so we won't be clearing effects. But Sarah provided a really good answer. Uh, we're going to be using coordinates. So this is where um, the coordinates come into play when we are updating our code. 
So I'm going to jump back into uh, the, the lesson um, and really go through how we can position a sprite. So now that we've you know, created our code to, um, to really use, uh, you, to get Panda to move across the screen, every time we click on flag, we need to start, we need to get him to start in a different position. Now, that was the, the code that we did together. And the new block that we will encounter today is the go to x, y coordinate block. Um, and this may be new to uh, some of your learners, especially in, in you know, earlier grades, but there is a couple of ways that you can uh, teach this concept of uh, coordinates or, or Cartesian planes um, that is really embedded nicely in M block five. So I'll go through that with you, but um, it is found in motion and it's, it sets a specific position for a sprite. And you can choose that position. You can actually type in the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, um, and you can move the sprite or the panda anywhere on the screen um, in different values. You can see the example on the far right here of, of our, sys of our uh, PowerPoint, um, which has negative values, and we can We'll see that in just uh, a minute. So in uh, M block five, we have obviously the, the Cartesian plane or the coordinate system that you can share with um, your learners. And you can see we can start with obviously the zero zero, which is the center or the middle of, um, uh, of the, the coordinate system. And you have the X axis, which is um, horizontal. OK, so it spans from negative 240 on the far left to positive 240 maximum on the far right. And then you have the vertical Y axis, which uh, spans the, to a minimum of negative 180 uh, on the, the bottom here. And on the top, it's a maximum of 180. So this covers the whole screen where Panda could essentially be in uh, and move across uh, and, and move him across the screen. So we're going to go back into M block five and we're going to add, as you can see in that um, in that previous slide, we're going to add a go to block just after the when flag is clicked. And this will cause our reset of where Panda is on the screen rather than just moving um, him manually all the time. So again, the, the lesson plan, the PowerPoint goes through the steps and we're going to see a, a new um, area that you can interact with and that your learners can interact with um, to, to, get, uh, to get them learning about coordinate systems. And essentially here, you can see where I'm, I just have my mouse hovering over it's, we're still under sprites. There are, there's a value for X, which right now is 262, which means it's on, you know, really after the 240 there. Um, and the Y value is the negative 11, which is a little bit under um, the, the zero line there for, for the Y. And every time you move the sprite, so if I clicked and drag uh, Panda you can see that the X and Y values have changed. And if I click and drag again, you can see the X uh, keeps going towards the left. It's a negative value. Y is still positive because it's a slightly up. So you can move the panda anywhere and your um, values will change in the manner that it's in. So uh, let's, uh, let me ask this question in the chat where or which coordinates should we put Panda in to help him, you know, move uh, move across the screen, you know, as much as possible before, uh, you know, starting again in that same spot. So what could be the X value? What could be the Y value to help um, Panda, you know, start in a good position uh, on the screen? So take a minute and uh, and put that into your into the chat. Um, I see a lot of similar answers, which is great. Uh, negative 240 um, on the x-axis, which is literally 
you know, just off the off the grid, but right on the grid, but at the maximum. Um, and then zero, which uh, obviously the Y is like nice and straight. So you can definitely do that there. Um, and what's really neat is that you can type that in right into M block five. So you can do negative 240 and zero, and you can see that he um, the software positions the sprites uh, nicely. So he's a little bit cut off. Um, Another option is to do it negative 200, which is another good idea. So it doesn't show that he's, you know, completely, um, you know, or half cut off from from the side. So this seems like a good value um, that we can use. Again, this is there's no one uh, correct answer. Um, so uh, you can choose a, a value as you can see uh, on the screen or on your side as well. So now that we have selected the value, if we go back to motion, you will notice the block here where it says go to X, Y. It matches exactly the number that you have just entered or that you moved the sprite into. So they do match right now. And every time I, I move the panda, they match from the interface, the XY coordinate interface, as well as the block. So this is really important to uh, share with your learners that you don't necessarily have to know the coordinate system. Um, this is a way for them to learn it uh, through this uh, really interactive manner uh, of just maybe just changing Panda's position. So, uh, and then you can introduce it a little bit more deeply in your classrooms. But um, again, we're going to take out where where Panda is basically positioned. Um, finally, is the number that's going to be in that block. So we're going to take out that block. And we're going to place it in between the when flag is clicked and the forever loop. Um, and we're not going to put it inside the forever because we don't want it to um, consistently be in that position because it's literally just going to stay in that uh, X, Y coordinate, but we're going to put it outside of, of the forever loop because as soon as we press the flag, you will start at that position uh, and then move forward uh, towards the right of the screen. And um, as soon as he gets to the right, we can press the flag again, and you will notice that uh, he will start again at negative 194. Uh, X and Y is 11. So I'm going to click on stop, click on flag again, and automatically he goes to that position on the screen. So really awesome uh, to, to get you started on positioning the sprites uh, on the screen and really integrate math uh, and the Cartesian planes into your curriculum. So we're going to jump back into the lesson. Uh, to the PowerPoints, and now we're going to add background. So we've done this before. This is not something new, but we're also going to add multiple sprites. Multiple sprites are important, especially if we want to cheer on um, Panda as he is running the race or, or, you know, running through this background that we'll see in, in just a minute. So um, again, the steps are there. Uh, in the PowerPoint as well as the lesson. We're, I'm going to jump back into the PowerPoint, but I'm going to highlight a couple of, sorry, in, in M block 5, but I'm going to highlight a couple of things that we will need. Um, one of the sprites that we will need is a, a boy 11, and we'll, we'll talk about um, that particular sprite. And um, uh, just sorry, just to go back here, we're also going to use a background called Playground. Background is called playground, and um, we'll add the the background. We'll add the sprite and uh, get him to cheer. We're gonna get um, boy eleven to cheer for a certain number of seconds. So that is the code. Um, again, switching back and forth to M block five. Um, so again, we're gonna go to background, the backgrounds tab to help us um, add a background. We're going to click on this plus button. And it will open the backdrop library for us to choose. Again, you can scroll down and choose and find the playground, 
or just to make it easier, you can type in playground and you'll find it's on here. I don't think I have it on my on one of my options there. Um, I hope you're able to find it on yours, but uh, I'm going to use something that will just help uh, show you the position of uh, of Panda on uh, a particular screen. I know pay, uh, Playground would have worked. Let me see if I can. That's really odd. OK, uh, that's no problem at all. I'm going to find. I'm going to find another one that we can choose a bus station. We, we use a bus station before. And as soon as you select your um, your background, again, you may need to position or change the position of Panda. Um, so we could get him to run a race on the street, not a big deal. Um, but if you have playground, you can continue with playground there. And the next thing we're going to add is another sprite. So I've I've switched from background into the sprites tab again. And we're going to click on add. And we're going to search search for boy 11. So hopefully boy 11 is here. Perfect. And um, you'll notice here there's nothing to indicate that boy 11 has multiple sprites. So just as he is here, he doesn't have uh, any other, sorry, multiple costumes, not sprites. Um, he doesn't have another uh, costume for him to change into or to switch into. So you'll be able to select him and I'll show you in another example where um, there's another sprite that um, you'll see on here that does have different costumes. Um, and if you, again, if you remember how to check, you click on costumes and um, you will see that boy 11 only has one costume there. All right, so now we get to code a second sprite. And uh, if you just remember from that slide that we were just on, um, we're going to get the when flag is clicked again. So whenever the code is run, um, Panda will, will cheer or say cheer for 0 0.5 seconds. And then between that first cheer and the second cheer and forever, um, he will wait 0 0.5 seconds. So again, Find your blocks, build your code. Here's the forever, and we're going to go to the looks menu to say uh, cheer. And you can change the number of seconds as was indicated on the slide. And under control is where we can find the wait block. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and run your code by clicking on the flag. Now, I do have to adjust my panda because you just saw him literally jump up. Um, so go back to the uh, to the sprite. And if you're using back uh, playground, uh, adjust them so that if panda is literally walking around the track or running around the track, he continuously stays there, not jumps on um, on the grass area. So I'm going to do the same. Um, this one's a little bit easier for me because it's a straight um, horizontal line. So I'm um, going to just change the area or the position of Panda. So negative 117. Let's check. Yeah. Negative 193, negative 179 there. Okay. So that should work. I'm going to click on flag and you can now see the second sprite say cheer um, and he's cheering on Panda forever because uh, he really loves Panda to win. But now we run into, um, we may run into another problem. And if you are running into this problem, um, please let me know what the problem is. Now I didn't run into it because I did move my Panda, but if you just added uh, the boy 11 and you didn't touch Panda, and let's say I move boy 11 across and I click on flag, what you'll notice or what some of you might run into 
is that boy 11 is on top of panda and you might see that on my screen right now. So right now it shows that panda is literally behind uh, boy 11. Now we don't want that to happen. And um, to solve that really simple problem that some of your learners might encounter is whichever sprite you click on last or that you move last is the one that will be in the foreground, okay? So if I was to click on and move Panda, that Panda will be in the foreground all the time. If I was to click on Boy 11, he will be in the foreground all the time. So whichever you click on last is the one that will be in the foreground. Now, for our purpose, we want Panda to always be in the foreground and all the ones cheering uh, in the background. So that is a very simple uh, problem that you may encounter that your, their, their learners may encounter as well. So we got one person cheering. This is awesome. Um, we're going to now get, and this is part of the actual independent practice uh, of our lesson, where we get a second, um, uh, a second sprite or second boy to cheer, but also switch costumes. So we're actually going to incorporate switching costume in the independent practice. Now, part of the independent practice is to add another sprite, uh, and this sprite is called boy15, who cheers on Panda when flag is clicked. And we're going to get boy15 to change costumes while cheering on Panda. Panda moves across the stage uh, when flag is clicked, and Panda is programmed to start at the left side of the stage when the green flag is clicked. So most of these are done, we just need to add our, um, our boy 15 and finish off the independent practice. Before we do that, I do want to go over the, some of the extensions that you could potentially do or have some of your learners do um, if they're ahead of others in the class. So you can challenge them to add a third friend to cheer on Panda. You may get Panda to say something before the, the start of the race. So he, he may say something like three, two, one, go, or get ready, set, go. Um, you can choose another trigger to start the race. Um, you, don't, you don't need to use flag. You can use space key or any other key. Um, you can change the appearance of boy 11 using transformation. So you can use all the different tools that you have uh, learned between lessons one and lessons five today to incorporate into your code. So again, uh, in the in the lesson plan, um, it does show you as the teacher or as the educator the example program, and this all these example programs are available to you on um, on the the downloaded curriculum folder that you just got from the website there. But I do want to show you the final um, the final example code, and I'll talk about Boy15 in just a minute. Uh, you can see that you have the code for boy15 saying um, forever, go for it, 0 0.5 seconds, and switching to the next costume. So let's do that together. Uh, I'm going to go back to mblock5, quickly add our boy15 sprite. I'm going to position him right beside boy11. And both of them are going to cheer on. Now, I'm not sure if you see this, but on your side, you will see kind of like a small icon beside that, um, beside Boy15 on the top left, which would indicate that Boy15 or that sprite has a uh, another costume. And even if you hover your mouse on top of that sprite, you can see the different costumes roughly of what Boy11, uh, sorry, Boy15 is doing. So when you click on Boy15, Click on OK. We've added a third sprite now, and we're going to finish off our code by um, getting boy15 to say, uh, go for it. So he's cheering on Panda with his friend there. Um, and this, this will kind of give you an idea of what your learners should be doing um, in, in this particular independent practice when, and what you should see from them as well. So I'm going to finish this off uh, with you, and then um, I'm going to 
go through a review and we might have some time um, maybe to take three or, three or five minutes to go through um, the uh, Google Classroom. So that's something that I plan to go with you, uh, with you today really simply uh, just to show you how you can integrate Google Classroom through this. So I'm just going to finish this off here. We're going to say go for it. Or 0 0.5 seconds. And we're going to do uh, next cost sheet. And when you click on the flag, you will see both of them cheering. Now, we may run into another issue here where the, the word bubbles are kind of overlapping each other. Um, there is no solution to this, but uh, the, the, the real solution is just to move the, um, the two sprites away from each other so that the word bubbles do not uh, overlap. So I'm just going to click on stop for a second and just give each of these uh, you know, sprites a little bit more space to get them to cheer without uh, the word bubbles you know, interacting uh, and, and you know, overlapping with each other. So they do, they still do again, but it's uh, if you have more space on the on the playground background, you shouldn't have uh, an issue there. And you can see, I just need to touch the panda one more time so that he is in the foreground. So once you have this, um, you can definitely save your code uh, using your uh, the account that you've created on the Google, uh, sorry, on the um, M Block Five. Uh, global community. So again, if you are, I'm not signed in, but if you go ahead and sign in using your credentials, you'll be able to save your um, your project on the cloud, and um, you'll be able to share that as an actual project in the studio with everybody around the world. So um, take a second to do that. You can change the title before you click on save. Um, I'm going to call this lesson five. Panda's race, and you will now see. Oops, I don't think I can use lesson. There's special characters that you can't use, like apostrophes. Um, so then you'll see the save button. This saves to the cloud, or if you want to save to your computer, you can use that format. Those are the two ways that you can save. So I'm going to save to the cloud. Um, and then I'll add that to my Creative Studio uh, later on using the project link. Um, but right now, I'm actually jump, going to jump into and spend the next five minutes before we get into some uh, Q&A uh, together um, by actually, I'm going to open a program that is available to you. It's example one program um, and show you how we can integrate those files with Google Classroom that could be already set up for you on, on your end. I've already set up uh, an example Google Classroom for you to see. Um, I haven't added any students. It's just uh, a, a way for you to show you um, how to integrate Google Classroom. So I'm going to open a file that I have um, downloaded from our, you know, our programs that's there. It's example one, um, and it will overlap the, the file that is open already. And that's OK because I've already saved it. And um, I'm going to manipulate this code to share with my students. And this is something that you can do as well, where um, you get them to, uh, to give or give them a starter project. Uh, and so what I mean by that is the blocks are there for them, available for them, but they're not in the correct order. So you can move these blocks around and you can tell them, um, you know, this is an assignment. This is an activity. I want you to put these blocks in the right sequence to get Panda to move across the screen um, while switching costumes. So let's save this. Um, so it's already saved, uh, or the lesson is is already had. There already has a title on there. So we didn't. We don't need to call it anything. You can call it lesson five starter file, just for your records there. And then under file, there's an option that we haven't explored yet. And it's called share to. Um, and it, it just requires you to be signed in uh, into Google Classroom if you do have that. So you're going to click on share to. 
it will quickly save that file into the cloud. And um, it should open for you. Let's see if we can. It should open an option to, to sh or to tell you where you want uh, to set to share it to. So I'm not sure why it's not opening for me. I, I do have Google Classroom um, open, so I'm not sure why it's not doing that. You may want to check out the resources um, uh, available on the website, but um, basically it's going to ask you to select a Google Classroom. So Daryl, I guess it worked for you. Um, you're going to you're going to select the class that you want to share that file with um, in your Google Classroom and you can assign it to particular students. You can assign it to the whole class, add different points or uh, marks for it, and then you can add a description or uh, instructions for them to follow, such as put the blocks together in a particular sequence to get Panda to move across the screen while switching costumes. And then you can post it in Google Classroom by, by doing the share to button. And uh, it should be uh, accessible to you if you have a classroom available to you. Um, so that is one thing I wanted to share before we end off with our regular review. Um, and I hope this, uh, this session has been great. We're going to go back to the review slides to review together um, these uh, concepts or these new blocks that we've just uh, gone through. So again, um, you can type in the chat and share with us your answers and we'll talk about them together uh, and see which ones are right, which ones are wrong and why they're wrong. So number one, question number one, uh, as we review and as, as part of the assessment, um, which block category does move 10 steps belong to? So this one should be easy. Um, yes, uh, D is the correct uh, correct answer. It is motion. And um, and that is the, the blue category uh, of the menu. Question number two, which of the following blocks can position the sprite on specific coordinates in the stage area? Is it A, B, C or D? A, B, C or D. First question number two. Awesome. So I see a lot of Bs coming in. Uh, B is correct, where it has a go to X and Y coordinate. Um, and the other two uh, possible answers, but they're not correct, is the C and D. So C and D give you a random position on uh, on the stage area, so they're not specific. So this is something that you can talk about with your students. You want specific um, coordinates on the coordinate system of M block five. So again, these are random. And then finally, question number three, uh, which sprite runs the fastest in the following programs? And this is a tricky one. So if you want to take a second to read through your code, or read through that code and select the correct answer. Which one moves the fastest? So a lot of answers coming in. Um, you guys are doing awesome. Yes, it is B. Great job. Um, and I'll talk about why, again, C and D are not correct. Um, obviously, A is slower because it's only 10 steps, so we're going to rule that out. But both C and D, if you really read the code with your learners from top to bottom, is that there is a wait time. There is there's a pause that the programming is uh, is or the program is running. So there's it's waiting 0.5 seconds, even though it's 50 steps, it's still going to wait. 0.5 seconds. And again, for the 10 steps, again, it's going to wait 0.5 seconds. So great job in catching that. Uh, correct answer is B because it moves the fastest or kind of the farthest first 
uh, across the screen there. So um, I just want to, before I end off and, and pass it on to Remy for any, uh, any questions, um, I do want to remind you that in the lesson plan, it does provide you some um, uh, alternative assessment. We've done in the past, or we've shown you in the past that they can share um, uh, something that, that they have learned interesting in other students' uh, work. So in like a, in a circle format, we have paper across uh, each of the each of the groups' uh, presentations, and you and students will go around and write something that is interesting of the project that their friends did and something that they would improve on. So you encourage this, this communication process, this feedback process that, um, that you would want to see in your, in your classroom, and then you can model that as well. Um, other alternative assessment ideas, you can share the project with a classmate, parent, or sibling and ask for feedback, so how you can improve. Um, and then uh, the final page always of the lesson plan is the, uh, the quiz. And um, it does provide the answers for you. So I hope you were not cheating when you're looking through uh, the lesson plan and, and kind of giving me the answers there. So um, I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, just another quick reminder that um, you can uh, continue with the, uh, the, in the independent practice and uh, you can share that on the community by visiting planet.mblock.cc. Um, and uh, create an account if you haven't done so, and share that in the curated studio using a project link. So uh, thank you so much for um, participating with me and, and interacting. It's been awesome. Um, next week, we will dive into uh, uh, getting Panda to play soccer. It's called Penalty Kick, um, and we'll see how we can incorporate more uh, of these uh, uh, concepts together with you. So I'll pass it on uh, to Remy for any Q&A with, uh, with you all. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Mina, for leading us through that. Um, and uh, we'll open it up uh, for Q&A. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, enter your question in the chat. Uh, or as always, uh, you can raise your hand. So I uh, see a first question. Uh, Claire, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Uh, hi, Remy. Uh, sorry, I, I asked, I remember you, you have, you have told us about it, but I forgot it. Uh, yesterday, I download all the file, I download the whole folder in my computer and uh, save everything in my, my drive. And uh, I'm, tr I was trying to actually open the, one of the documents, it's called the, uh, let me show, um, it's called the example programs. I I couldn't figure out how to open. It's called like lesson five campus sports meeting example one, two, three. Those three files, I couldn't open them. Yeah, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, so uh, just as a reminder to everyone, all the material are available on our website at logicsacademy.com forward slash steam on board. And your specific question, if you go to uh, lesson five, and you click on download curriculum material, it will open up a, a Google Drive folder where you can download uh, the folder. And when you download that folder, uh, when you download the example programs, um, the way you open those files, because they are mblock5 files. So what you do is you actually go into mblock5, the software, and then you click file open and then retrieve that from the location you saved it on your a desktop, uh, Google Drive or OneDrive or just your local de desktop folder. So they, they are not uh, self-executable. Uh, you have to actually go to mBlock um, as a software and open it from there. Uh, Remy, uh, actually I was trying it, but when I open the all, um, like I, I go to mBlock and uh, um, click the, the file and there is a open, yeah, this option. And I, when I open it, it just uh, show me my projects. It, yeah, I I couldn't find a way to find like open any file on desktop or downloads. Um, sure. So maybe uh, we can walk through that um, to to show you how that works. Um, 
and uh, maybe if, while we're setting that up, if there's other questions uh, in, in the chat or anyone else want to ask any questions uh, while we're just demonstrating how to do that. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, I can share my screen, uh, Rami, if you'd like to to help um, to help her out. So I'm going to share my screen to show you how you can open um, the files uh, and that you've downloaded from our website there. So uh, I've just shared my screen. I hope you are able to see it now. And um, once you have, you know, uh, this is the one of the files that I had already um, tried to do with uh, with Google Classroom or to share on Google Classroom, but I'm going to override that. So I have an mBlock 5 open um, and I'm going to click either open or import from your computer. This is another option that you can use um, and it opens your uh, your actual you know, desktop files. And so there, there it is. You can do um, lesson five, open that folder, example programs, and then there you can see the files that um, are can be opened and executed through mBlock5. So I'm going to just open example two, and it should change. It should ask me, do you want to save if I haven't saved that? But um, it's it has just opened there, and it just may take a second to load. But So just to clarify again, uh, Claire, and for everyone, there's file open, which, uh, and then there's also in, uh, opening from your computer. So those are two different features. So make sure if you're saved it on your computer, you're using um, the, the second feature there. Okay. Is, uh, yeah, yes, Remy and uh, um, uh, Mina, yeah, I opened it. Yeah, because uh, there is a, underneath the open, there is a open from your computer. I didn't notice it. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah, no problem. thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you're you, Claire. Welcome. Okay. Okay, uh, anyone else have any other questions uh, or um, um, that you want to ask during this time? Again, uh, if, if there are no other questions, uh, just a reminder um, the, um, that you are always able to um, connect with us uh, throughout the week at the Logics Academy Educator Community, uh, the MBlock5 uh, discussion group. Uh, where you can ask questions and engage with us uh, throughout the week until we join you again next week uh, in uh, our uh, lesson six. Um, and until that time, feel free to visit logicsacademy.com forward slash virtual training, um, where you can see uh, all the other uh, training programs that we're offering um, um, from um, partner sessions to topics in Flipgrid and Minecraft. Uh, topics in uh, Office 365, as well as even uh, learning to code uh, using a virtual robotics tool, uh, Dash's Neighborhood. Uh, and, and once you join that training, you get free access to the tool. So make sure to join uh, our training sessions uh, as we continue to support um, uh, teachers during this time period. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you um, and seeing you again next Friday. Again, uh, Mina and I will stay around for a couple of minutes if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, I uh, 